The next special sense we'll discuss is hearing, including the anatomy of the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The anatomy of the ear. The human ear is designed to capture sound waves from our environment. It also functions to help balance the head and neck. The ear itself is divided into three regions, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear includes the pinna, external auditory meatus, and the auditory canal. The auditory canal contains glands that secrete cerumen or earwax, which is a protective substance. The auditory canal transmits sound waves to the inner ear from the external environment. Now we'll move on to discuss the anatomy of the middle ear, including the auditory ossicles. Depicted in this image, the middle ear is separated from the outer ear by the tympanic membrane. And within the inner ear, the auditory ossicles are the malleus, incus, and stapes. The base of the stapes is at the oval window. The middle ear contains air and the tympanic membrane, which is connected to the round window through the malleus, incus, and stapes. These three bones convert the movement of the eardrum to the fluid-filled cochlea. The malleus is attached to the eardrum and articulates and moves the incus. The incus transmits sound vibrations from the malleus to the stapes, and the stapes in turn transmits sound vibrations from the incus to the oval window of the inner ear. Within the inner ear is the cochlea, and it's made up of the following structures. The scala media, which is a membranous duct that contains the organ of corti. The scala tympani, which lies beneath the scala media and ends at the round window, and the organ of corti. This is sensory epithelium that contains the auditory nerve receptors, each with its own hair cell. Sound transduction. The stapes transmit sound vibrations to the oval window. This in turn vibrates the paralymph fluid in the scala vestibuli tympani. This displaces the basilar membrane and with it the organ of corti. The cilia of the hair cells are bent by membrane movement and depending on the direction, the hair cell is hyperdepolarized. This causes generator potentials in the cochlear afferent nerve fibers. Also in the inner ear is the vestibular apparatus. This is made up of three canals, superior canal, posterior canal, and a horizontal canal. The vestibular apparatus functions with the inner ear components and detects angular and linear accelerations of the head. These three semicircular canals are filled with endolymph and are connected with the urticle. The semicircular canals on one side of the head are matched with the ones on the opposite side. This allows pairs of ducts to sense movements of the head. The following is a clinical note on otitis media, or a middle ear infection. The infection itself is located between the tympanic membrane and the inner ear, and it usually involves the eustachian tube. The infection can be caused by a virus, a bacteria, or a fungal infection. And the symptoms of otitis media include pain as the pressure builds up behind the tympanic membrane. Also, there may be pus that drains into the ear canal and a change in color and texture visible through an otoscope. The treatment for otitis media includes mild pain medication and antibiotics in most cases. The cupula and its function in head motion. Inside the semicircular canals, there is sensory epithelium, and this epithelium is covered in cilia, which are embedded in the cupula. The cupula is a gelatinous structure that moves as the endolymph rushes past it. As the cupula moves, the cilia within it transmit nerve impulses to the brain via the vestibular cochlear nerve. Head movement is sensed in a push-pull procedure. Each pair of semicircular canals, one on either side of the head, act in concert 
to signal head movements. As can be seen in this image, as the head turns to the right, the cupula on the right triggers the cilia to generate nerve impulses. This is right side excitation. The one-sided impulse registers in the brain as a movement in that direction. Human hearing involves pitch perception. The organ of corti is at the center of sound and pitch perception, and the organ of corti contains the auditory sensory cells. The pinna and middle ear amplify sound levels approximately 20 times higher than the level of sound that entered the outer ear. The organ of corti is sensitive to excessively high sound and when it's damaged contributes to irreversible hearing loss. Pitch is the perceived frequency of a sound along with loudness. The organ of corti plays a major role in pitch perception. High frequency sound activates the basilar membrane near the oval window. Low frequency sound travels further down the membrane. Within the organ of corti, the mechanical energy of the incoming sound wave is converted through fluid movement and the amplitude of basilar membrane displacement to afferent nerve fiber impulses. The vestibular sensation pathways. The vestibular ganglia give rise to the fibers that form the vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. At the border of the pons and the medulla oblongata, these fibers enter the vestibular nuclei. The vestibular nuclei perform the following functions. They integrate sensory information about balance and equilibrium. They communicate with the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex to provide a sense of position and movements, and they transmit motor commands to the nuclei in the brainstem and spinal cord. The following are some examples of diseases and conditions that affect the ear. Number one, tinnitus. This is a symptom of a condition or disease of the ear. Some causes of tinnitus include ear infection and noise-induced hearing loss. Tinnitus itself is reported as either being a ringing or buzzing sound in one or both ears. Number two, acoustic neuroma. This is a benign tumor of the myelin-producing cells of the vestibulocochlear cranial nerve. These tumors can arise randomly or as part of neurofibromatosis. Number three, otitis externa. This is also known as swimmer's ear. This can be caused by the presence of germs that can infect the ear. Also, disruption to the skin of the ear permits the infection to occur. This is typically treated with topical solutions and ear drops to limit and treat the infection itself. 